Welcome to the course on risk modeling in insurance. My name is Katrien Antonio and I will be your teacher for this course. This course will equip you with the basic tools necessary for the construction, the estimation and the interpretation of quantitative risk models with a particular focus on the frequency and severity approach typical for general insurance risk models. Now when talking about risks in insurance, what do we mean exactly? Well, as Professor David Promyslov writes in his textbook on fundamentals of actuarial mathematics, risk refers to the possibility that something bad happens. In particular, those bad events that result in a financial loss. Now, examples are getting involved in a car accident, where a third party, as well as yourself, report some material damage as well as bodily injury, or a house and its, co its content that catch fire, or the early death of a family's main breadwinner. Agents take steps to mitigate the financial loss involved. For instance, they buy an insurance cover. Insurance then exists as a device to share or to pool the risks among a large group of people, that is, among all those who bought the insurance from a particular company. As the motto of Lloyd's in London says, in insurance, the contributions of the many will cover the misfortunes of the few. Now, this brings us to the basic principles of an insurance contract. The insurer agrees to pay out money, the so-called insurance benefits, at specified times upon the occurrence of specified events causing a financial loss. And in return, the client or the insured pays premiums and the contract between both parties is called the insurance policy. As such, the insurance device trades uncertainty for certainty. Uncertainty here refers to the fact that at the start of the contract, the policyholder does not know whether he or she will be involved in any event that will lead to a financial loss. And if involved, he or she also does not know how large this loss would be. However, Buying an insurance contract, he or she will know for sure how much the insurance fee or the premium will cost. Moreover, by accepting the payment of the fee, the policyholder or insured is sure that the insurer will cover any losses related to insured events, if those events would occur. So the risk is here transferred from individuals facing the risk to the insurance company. Now, in this course, you will look under the hood of an insurance contract and you will study the quantitative building blocks of so-called loss models or risk models. Such models are useful in many financial domains, among which um, they are useful in the study of life insurances, which require a risk model for the time to death of a policyholder. They are useful in non-life insurance contracts and in health insurance contracts, but also in the literature on building operational risk or credit risk models for banks, where, for instance, the probability of default, the loss given default and the exposure at default models will rely on the tools that we will discuss in this course. With a more fancy term, you could also label the course as a course on loss modeling analytics or something like that. Now, the study of risk models for insurance losses is highly relevant for multiple tasks within insurance companies. For example, the pricing of products, the calculation of the technical provisions in a reserving setting, and the measurement and management of risks. Such loss models require both flexibility as well as tractability. Flexibility because one should be able to capture different shapes and features of data, Tractability because one should be able to perform calculations with and simulations from the models that are constructed. Now, according to the uh, principles of actuarial science as formulated in the reference that you see over here, uh, we can say that actuarial risks 
can be stochastically modeled based on assumptions regarding the probabilities that will apply to the actuarial risk variables in the future, including assumptions regarding the future environment. It is then important for us to reflect upon the type of random events or risk variables that typically matter in models for insurance. Now these are these very often correspond with one of the following three types. Um, there is the occurrence of an event, huh? for instance, um, will that, um, uh, how many, um, there is the occurrence of the event, huh? for instance, will the claim event take place in the future? There is the timing of the event, so uh, that refers to the time at which the insured event will uh, take place, if it uh, takes place, if it occurs. And there is the severity, that's the cost of settling the claim, so that refers to a financial loss in euros, for instance. Now, uh, in this course, most of our effort will go to models for non-life or general insurance. And the fundamentals of modern insurance trace back to the Great Fire of London in uh, the 17th century. And this event uh, in London has initiated um, the fire insurance protection against the financial consequences of such disastrous uh, events. So fire insurance uh, is here mentioned as a first example of a product from the branch of uh, non-life insurance. Now to continue on this discussion, uh, so the, the branch or the domain of non-life insurance covers, that is also very often denoted as PNC insurance, uh, where the P refers to property and the C refers to casualty. So that's a name that is typically used in the States. In the UK, people often call this uh, domain of insurance or these lines of business. Uh, they refer to them as general insurance. And this includes everything that is not life insurance. Mm -hmm. Examples of products or lines of business, LOBs, are then motor insurance, car insurance, fire insurance, flood insurance, and liability or casualty insurance. And you can see, you can read here what those different products, um, uh, what, 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 they, uh, what they mean. Now, many other classifications of insurance products and covers exist. For instance, a typical classification in the UK distinguishes between commercial and personal lines as well as the so-called London uh, market. Commercial lines here refers to protection offered to businesses, whereas personal lines refer to covers offered to individuals and families. And for more information about the London market, I refer to the links and references that are posted over here. You can find here on this uh, sheet, on sheet number 10, you can find a bullet list with features of non-life contracts on the uh, left-hand side and features of life insurance contracts on the right-hand side. So I recommend that you take some time to read uh, these items and to reflect upon the differences between both uh, branches of, of, of insurance products. Typical for the left side, for the non-life side, is that both frequency, and frequency refers to how often does an event take place, and severity, and that is, if the event happens, how much will it cost? Or what will its impact be? So both frequency and severity matter for the products on the left-hand side in this uh, visualization. So uh, therefore, this course will spend quite some time on the modeling of both frequency and severity data. A roadmap for our course is visualized in this uh, flowchart. So when offering a certain type of insurance product, the insurer will have to determine a suitable price for the product, combining insights from risk models as well as from the market in which the company operates. You will learn in the course how to go from basic risk models to more sophisticated data science models where the characteristics of the policy and the policy holder, as well as the product, are taken into account when determining a fair price. Now, after selling insurance policies, claims will be filed with the insurance company and clients, policyholders, will expect a reimbursement for their loss. 
and to settle future losses with respect to covers to products that you sold in the past, the insurer has to hold sufficient capital. And calculating this capital, or this so-called technical provision, is the job of the reserving actuary. Now, in this course, you will use your fundamentals. Huh? You will use your fundamentals on uh, risk models to construct uh, both pricing as well as reserving models. Pricing models for non-life insurance products rely on an estimate obtained from statistical models of the expected future costs related to the insurance coverage. And this is the so-called premium or uh, pure premium or risk premium. Actuaries will add a risk margin or a safety loading to this expected cost and possibly some other components like a loading for profit, a loading for commissions to agents and so on. So this explains here how we go from the pure risk premium or the pure premium that is an expected value uh, of, of the future cost on the contract, how we move from this expected value to the actual insurance premium that will be charged in practice. Okay, so to calculate this pure premium or risk premium, you will combine an estimate of the expected claim frequency with an estimate of the expected severity on a claim. So these are the two ingredients that you need. So once again, we see that the risk models for frequency and severity data are highly important. Right, so let's see, let's reflect how both uh, loss models will be then will then be combined into a tariff structure. So let's see how this pure premium is constructed. Well, first of all, you have to reflect about the structure of the historical data that are available to calibrate your risk models. With so-called cross-sectional data, you have information from, say, N policyholders over one policy period or perhaps over multiple uh, periods, but you will ignore the time series structure of the data. So essentially, uh, you will focus on uh, typically one observation per policy holder. Or if you have multiple observations on the same policy holder with cross-sectional data, you will ignore the dependence among the observations with respect to the same policy holder. On the other hand, you could also work with panel data or longitudinal data where policyholders are followed over multiple periods and the time series structure and the time dependence in the data is acknowledged in the model. Multi-level or hierarchical data go even further and incorporate multiple layers in your data sets. For instance, a typical example would be that you have fleet contracts where each fleet covers a bunch of vehicles and each vehicle is then followed over time. So then you have three layers in your data. There is the fleet, there is the vehicle, and there is the time dimension. Now in this course you will focus on cross-sectional data, pricing with panel data, for instance through credibility models or bonus malus models, is beyond the scope of this uh, course. In the risk model setting, you identify for each insured, insured I, you identify NI, the number of claims, registered during a period of exposure, uh, denoted with DI, and you also register YIJ, the random variable that denotes the loss that corresponds to each claim that is made. So the J here runs from 1 to ni, so from 1 to the number of claims reported by policyholder i. The total loss or the aggregate loss uh, reported by insured i during this period of exposure can then be expressed as the sum of the reported losses, so as the sum of the yi1 up to the yini. Now, when data are available in the form um, that is sketched over here, uh, um, we say or we, we can calculate the pure premium, having data uh, available in this particular format, we can calculate the pure premium as follows. So you see here that we're going to look at a random variable PI, that is the total loss for policyholder I per unit of exposure. So we take the random variable LI and divide by the length of the exposure period, di. Squeezing in the number of claims in the numerator and the denominator, 
leads us to the expression that we can express this p random variable as a product of the frequency and the severity. Yeah? So this boils down to a product of claim frequency and claim severity, whereas frequency is the number of claims per unit of exposure to risk and severity is the average amount paid per loss. The expected value of the random variable p on this uh, sheet will then give you the so-called risk premium or pure premium. Now, besides those um, having the data available in this particular format, you can also have the data being registered and stored with some additional granularity. In particular, instead of only storing the aggregate loss Li, you can have the detailed losses Y1 up to Y and I at your disposal. And in that case, huh, we're going to uh, express, we're going to combine the data into the random variable Li using this compound sum. Uh, it's a compound sum because it is a sum of random variables, but the number of terms in the sum is a random variable itself. So again, calculating the pure premium would then imply that you have to calculate the expected value of this random variable Li. So the job is now to find an expression for the expected value or the mean of the random variables that we just introduced. Starting from the expression on sheet number 15, and assuming independence between frequency and severity, the risk premium results as the product of expected premium with expected severity. Of course, where we assume independence between this uh, random variable f and the random variable that expresses the severity. Now, with the more granular approach from sheet 16, you have to calculate the expected value of the compound sum random variable. So that is, once again, a random variable, a sum, um, where the number of terms in the sum is stochastic as well. And you can calculate this uh, expected value using the tower rule or the rule of or the law of iterated uh, expectations. You can see the details over here, and I invite you to have a close look at this der derivation. Now, both derivations on the previous sheet assume independence between the frequency and the severity random variable, an assumption that is often made in this type of calculations. Some reflections about this assumption are put together here, and you're welcome to read those. So to conclude, you covered three co key concepts that will be useful in the rest of the course. There is, on the one hand, exposure to risk, which refers to the basic rating unit underneath a non-life insurance contract. Uh, for instance, in motor insurance, that is typically the period during which coverage is provided. In workers' compensation insurance, exposure to risk is expressed as the number of full-time equivalents on the company's uh, payroll, for example. Second element, second key uh, concept is the notion of claim frequency. That is the number of incurred claims per unit of earned exposure. And last, we also discussed the claim severity. That is the average payment per incurred claim. Okay, so that concludes this uh, first uh, lecture for the course.